Welcome to the West Winds Breviary. We trust these short online services will inspire you and ennoble you, giving you hope and courage as you shadow God in the redemption of the world. Morning, church. Thank you for joining us for Church Online. God hides so we'll look in all the secret places. God wills to be found. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever. Genesis 14, verse 17. After his return from the defeat of Kerdeleomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him, Abram, at the valley of Shiva. That's the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of every, everything. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons, but take the goods for yourself. And Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I've lifted my hand to the Lord God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, that I would not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, lest you say, I've made Abram rich. I'll take nothing but what the young men have already eaten. Now, a little background is important to this story. Uh, Abram's nephew Lot was captured in a raid by a group of kings that were battling. All told, it was a battle of nine different kings, five versus four. The king of Sodom was one of those who was originally defeated. And in the process of his defeat, Abram's not, uh, nephew Lot was captured. So Abram goes to war. He grabs 318 fighting men from his own family, which is, I gotta say, sort of impressive. And he goes out and fights the kings of Kerdele, uh, the king of Kerdeleomer and all the, his allies, decimates them, rescues his nephew, and gets a ton of plunder and captives in the process. So then, and Abram's marching back home, and, and, and the king of Sodom comes out to meet him, essentially to say, hey, um, let, let's make a deal. Since you won the battle that I lost, but it's really kind of my fight anyway, wh why don't you give me all this stuff? But on the way, before Abram really collides with the king of Sodom, out comes this shadowy, fantastic, mystical figure, Melchizedek, the, the, the priest of God Most High. Now this is fantastic because there's like there's no Israel yet historically. Like there's not there's not even a Jewish people yet. There's not an ethnicity yet. There's just one guy. There's just Abram. So the, so the fact that Abram, who, who's seen God face to face, is confronted here again with, with somebody who at least at least prefigures Christ. Melch the priest of God Most High is is hugely significant. And, and Melchizedek, as we previously discussed, offers Abram bread and wine. He offers him the sacrament and a blessing. He mediates 
and, 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 and congeals Abraham more, more fully into the covenant God has just promised him. Um, and then after this whole episode with Melchizedek, who vanishes or disappears or drops out of the text, Abram is then confronted with the king of Sodom who tries to make him a deal. And it's a crappy deal. It's a deal that would give the king of Sodom glory that he didn't earn. It's a deal that would put Abram at least partially in debt and in relationship with the king of Sodom who didn't earn anything. And it would mean that everything that Abraham had earned by the grace and power of God Almighty was now compromised by the, the influence, by the partnership with a coward and a loser and a deal maker. So the king of Sodom comes to, comes to seduce Abram, comes to snare him, snare his reputation, snare his faith. Um, and Abraham says no. Easily he says no. And, and I can't help but, but see the connection between Melchizedek offering bread, wine, and blessing and the king of Sodom trying to make him a deal. It's like, it's like God knows that Abraham is going to face temptation. And so before the temptation ever shows up, God gives him a little, well, a, a little boost, a little, a little something, something. God provides the sacrament before the snare. God provides a reminder of the covenant, of where Abram's strength comes from, of where Abram's hope lies before Abram's ever tempted to give it away. And God does the same thing with you and me. He comes to us over and over and over again, reminding us, I'm here for you. I bless you. I have plans for you. Together, we're going to do great things for you, through you, with you, and by you, for your people. Um, but you're gonna face temptation. It's right around the corner. The problem, of course, is that we don't often recognize God when he comes. And in fact, it's amazing that Abram did. I mean, who was Melchizedek to Abram? No, a stranger. He didn't know him. If, if Abram was looking for known ways God visits, Melchizedek didn't figure into that. He was an unknown, un trusted, unnoteworthy way. I mean, he, he came out of nowhere. Isn't that just like God? Though? Doesn't God just come out of nowhere sometimes? Doesn't God just come out of nowhere sometimes and bless you or remind you or encourage you or bolster you or rebuke you or chasten you? Doesn't God just find new ways to get our attention? And we often miss them because we get so blind myopic, we get so tunnel visioned. And, but friends, we, we gotta get heads up. We gotta be, look around, we gotta be aware of the fact that God is moving all the time. God is always speaking. God is always offering you bread, wine, and blessing. Every day, in innumerable ways, God is chasing you down, reminding you of who you are and whose you are. And it's up to us to pay attention. Because temptation we can see. The seduction we can spot. Sometimes we kinda like it. Sometimes we kinda look for it. But before there's ever the seduction, there's the sacrament. Before there's ever the temptation, there's the truth. And the truth is, God has claimed you first. So be on the lookout, man, and say yes when he shows up.
Jeff Hansen, thank you for everything you did helping us to reopen the building with all of the lighting in the auditorium. Uh, we really wanted it to feel special and magical when people came back inside and you helped us with that a lot. And I have a $5 Starbucks gift card that I will send to you. God loves to dress up in all the larva dei. So pay attention. Learn to discern the divine beneath humanity's masks. Grace and peace, everybody. We bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus for joining us at church online.